it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Alrighty then, here we are with chapter one, lesson number two, partial fractions, two repeated linear factors. Now a very quick recap of partial fractions. Remember from the last lesson, if you had two over x plus one, add three over x, take away two, well you could add these fractions together and that would give you five x take away one over x plus one x take away two. That's a simple algebraic process. We have been doing that for years, but sometimes we have to go back the way in order to aid differentiation and integration, which we will see later on. If we split the fraction into two or more simpler fractions, so if we reverse that, then it is known as expressing this fraction in its partial fractions. And there are four types. We started with distinct linear factors in the last amazing lesson, and we're now moving on to look at repeated linear factors. So what is that all about? Well, you can see here that the denominator of this contains a repeated linear factor. We've got this x take away three repeated, and you can tell that because we've got x take away three squared, which means we'd have x plus two times x take away three times x take away three, so the x take away three is repeated. Whenever this is the case, if we split that into its partial fractions, we must repeat the x take away three in the denominator from a power of one all the way up to n. So in this case, the partial fractions, the way we'd write it, well, the x plus two we would have as a over x plus two. Because the x take away three is repeated, we'd write it as b over x take away three to the power of one plus c over x take away three to the power of two. So you can see that this repeated linear factor is repeated in here, just in the denominator, it's going from x take away three to the power of one, all the way up to the power of two, because we've got it to the power of two. And again, it's gonna be some constants, a, b, and c. Further example, if you had something like three x take away seven over x cubed, x plus one, well you can see there that the x is repeated, we've got an x cubed, which means it's x times x times x, so that x is repeated. So we're going to have it as a over x to the power of one. We're wanting to go up to the power of three, so we'll then have b over x to the power of two. And then we'd have plus c over x to the power of three. So whichever one is repeated is going to be go from the power of one all the way up to whichever power you have. So x to the power of one, x to the power of two, x to the power of three, and with x plus one, we would just have as plus d over x plus one. Let's try some examples with that then. So example one, express x squared take away seven x plus nine over x plus two bracket x to take away one squared in partial fractions. Well, the first thing that we notice here is that there is a repeated linear factor. This x take away one is repeated. We've got it squared. So it's x take away one times x take away one. Therefore, when we write this in its partial fractions, we can say that that would be, well, because we've got x plus two, it's not repeated, it's just x plus two, it's your distinct linear factor. So it'll just be a over the x plus two. Because x take away one is repeated, it's going to be plus a b over x take away one to the power of one plus c over x take away one to the power of two. Remember the bit that's repeated, you want to have going from the power of one all the way up to whichever power you have. So here, it's just going to be two. From there, to add the fractions together, well, you need the same denominator. We need the denominator to be x plus two bracket x take away one squared. This is what we need the denominator to be. If we look at a, well, a is already over the x plus two. So we're needing then to multiply the denominator by x take away one squared. But if we do that, the fraction will change. So we multiply the top and the bottom by x take away one squared. So we'd end up with that. So a times x take away one squared over x plus two bracket x take away one squared. That gives us the same denominator as the left hand side. B is over x take away one. Well, what else do we need? Well, we need the x plus two, but because we've got x take away one squared, we'd need another x take away one. So we multiply the top and the bottom by x plus two and x take away one. That will then change the denominator to the one that we want x plus two bracket x take away one squared. 
C is over x take away 1 squared. Well, if we think, right, well, we've got the x take away 1 squared, what else do we need? Well, we're needing to multiply that by x plus 2. So we multiply the numerator and denominator for C by x plus 2. That way we can see that we have the same fraction right the way along the same denominator. So therefore, we can then add our fractions together. So add the numerators and the denominators because they're all the same. Just leave it as x plus 2 bracket x take away 1 all squared. What do we do from there? Brilliant. You remember, we cancel the denominators because the left hand side is over x. Uh, plus 2x take 1 squared, and the right-hand side is over x plus 2x1 squared. Well, the numerators must be equal. So cancel the denominators, and we're just left with the numerators. They must be equal. From there, we're wanting to find out these values of a, b, and c. So to do that, we have to choose different values of x. The best way to do this is to look at what you have in the brackets. Well, we've got x take away 1 squared. If but that was 0, then that would be 0 times a, which would eliminate a. And it would also eliminate this as well. So it would be 0 times all of this, so it would eliminate b. So let's set this equal to 0, therefore x would equal 1. So we're going to let x equal 1. If x was equal to 1, we'll work that out. We'd have 1 squared, take away 7 times 1, add 9, which is going to give us 3. That would be equals 1, take away 1 is 0, so that's 0 times a, so it's eliminating a. In here, you'd have zero take away, you'd have one take away one, which is zero, so it'd be zero times b, which is zero b, and one add two is three, so you'd have three c. From there, a and b will be eliminated, three c is three, meaning then that c is equal to one. So we know the value of c. Now let's choose a different value of x to hopefully find a or b. So for this one here, again, I'm just moving down the brackets, I've got an x plus two. Well, if that was equal to 0, that would eliminate b. And it would also eliminate c. So let's set this x plus 2 equal to 0, therefore x would equal negative 2. So let's let x equal negative 2. As I said, that would then mean that whatever you've got an x add 2, that would turn that to 0, meaning it would be 0 times whatever you're multiplying it by. So it's going to eliminate b and c. From there then, if x equals negative 2, Negative 2 squared, take away 7 times negative 2, add 9, gives you 27. Negative 2, take away 1 is negative 3, square that, you get 9, so it's 9a. And as I just said, you'd have 0b and 0c. Therefore, 9a is 27, so we know a is going to be 3. Last one, well, you can see that we've got this x take away 1, we've set that equal to 0. We've got the x add 2, we've set that equal to 0. There's nothing else we can set equal to 0. So, how do we find the value of b what do we do yeah we can just choose a different value of x just choose some simple number if you sub in that value of x sub in a and c the only thing missing will be b so pick some easy value to let x equal easiest number of all is probably just going to be zero so if x was equal to zero we'd have zero squared take away seven times zero add nine which is just going to be nine that would equal zero take away one all squared times a which is going to be one a 0 add 2, 0 take away 1 times b, which will be take away 2b, and 0 add 2 is 2 times by c is 2c. So it gives us this equation here, but we know the values of a and c, so if we sub in these values of a and c, it will give us 9 equals 3 take away 2b plus 2. And then the only thing missing is b, so we can rearrange that, so b works out to be negative 2. Remember, we were asked to express this in partial fractions. We split it up so it was a over x plus 2, b over x take away 1, and c over x take away 1 all squared. Therefore, we know that a is 3, so we're going to write that as 3 over x plus 2. b is negative 2, so just take the negative to the front, so it'll be take away 2 over x plus 1. And c was 1, so it'll be plus 1 over x take away 1 squared. So just replacing these values of a, b, and c. Next example, example 2, express x squared plus 5x plus 7 over x plus 2 in brackets cubed. So with this one here, the first thing that you notice once again is that there is a repeated linear factor. 
Ooh. So what do you do in this case? Well, because it's repeated, we need to take whatever is repeated and have that to the power of one, and then to the power of two, to the power of three, to the power of four. We're starting to the power of one and then working up to whichever power we have. Because here it's to the power of three, we're going to write that as a over x plus two to the power of one. You obviously don't need to write the one. Plus b over x plus two squared. And we're going up to cubed, so we're then going to have plus c over x plus two cubed. From there, if you want to add these fractions together, you need the same denominator. The denominator that we are looking for is x plus 2 cubed. Because a is over x plus 2, well, what do we need to multiply that by to get x plus 2 cubed? Good, we need to multiply that by x plus 2 squared. So multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 2 squared. If you do that, well, that will be x plus 2 squared times x plus 2, which is the x plus 2 cubed. That's what we want. B is over x plus 2 squared. How do we get x plus 2 cubed? What do we multiply it by? Good, just an x plus 2. So multiply the top and the bottom numerator denominator by x plus 2. And C is over x plus 2 cubed. That is what we want. So we leave it just as it is. Therefore, each one of our fractions is over x plus 2 cubed. From there then, because they're all over x plus 2 cubed, they're obviously just not written as x plus 2 cubed, uh, you can then add the numerator. So we end up with a times x plus 2 squared plus b times x plus 2 plus c over x plus 2 cubed. From there, the next step, what do you do? Good, you cancel the denominators. So if you cancel the denominators, we can say that the numerators are going to be equal. So x squared plus 5x plus 7 equals a times x add 2 squared plus b times x plus 2 plus c. Now we need to deal with that. Yeah. So we need to find these values of a, b, and c. How can we do that? Well, suppose the only bit we've really got in the brackets here is x plus 2. So let's let make that equal to 0, because if it was, well, that would be 0 times a, it eliminates a. It would be 0 times b, which eliminates b, and it would let us find c. So let's set x plus 2 equal to 0. So therefore, x would be negative 2. So let's let x equal negative 2. If x is negative 2, as I just said, it would eliminate a and b, because it would be 0 times each of them. So if x is negative 2, work out negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 plus 7. That will give you 1 plus 0 times a plus 0 times b plus c. Therefore, we know the value of c is going to be 1. What do we do next, though? How do we work out these other values? How do we work out a and b? Well, what you want to do is you just want to pick some values of x. Pick the easiest numbers you can. Just make it simple for yourself. You can choose whatever you like, but I'm just going to choose 0. Nice and simple. So if x was 0, we'd have 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 7, which is obviously 7. Uh, 0 add 2 all squared is just going to be 4. So that'd be 4a. 0 add 2 is 2, so it'll be 2 times b, which is 2b, and then plus c. You know the value of c is 1, so let's replace c with 1. And from there, well, really, it gives us this equation here. 4a plus 2b is equal to 6. I suppose we could divide everything by 2, but really, we've got this equation where we've got a and b. Two unknowns. So we can't do much else with that. So let's pick a different value of x. Let's, again, choose an easy number. What number would you choose? Yeah, I would choose 1 as well. Pick something nice and simple. So if x was equal to 1, we'd have 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 7, which works out to be 13. 1 add 2, squared it is 9, so it's 9a. 1 add 2 is obviously 3, so that's 3b plus c. Again, you know the value of c, so sub it in. c is 1, so put that in there. And again, you get an equation. So I've got 12 equals 9a plus 3b. Again, you could always go and simplify that, but we've still got this equation with two unknowns. What do we do then if we've got these two equations, two unknowns? Brilliant, good, you're remembering simultaneous equations. So, way back in National 5, many, many years ago, you solved simultaneous equations. You were given something like that and you were asked to solve it. I'm hoping everybody remembers how to solve these. It's normally easy enough. Uh, if you do solve them, A works out to be 1 and B also works out to be 1. From that then, 
We are asked to express that in partial fractions, so we split it up so it was a over x plus 2, b over x plus 2 squared, and c over x plus 2 cubed. We have just found the values of a, b, and c, and that just so happens they all work out to be 1. So we can say then that a over x plus 2 becomes 1 over x plus 2, b over x plus 2 squared, well b is 1, so b plus 1 over x plus 2 squared, and c over x plus 2 cubed, c is also 1, so it'll be plus 1 over x plus 2 cubed. And that is how you would solve that one. If you're unsure with the simultaneous equations part, just have another wee look back to simultaneous equations from National 5. Try these questions then. It's partial fractions, repeated linear factors. Give them a shot. Any problems, let me know. Once you're quite happy with that, give these questions a shot just in the workbook. Unit 1 workbook It's on page 3. The answers are all there. Check the answers as you go. If you still need the workbook, send me an email and I will send you a copy. Good luck. Have fun. Bye. Woohoo! Yeah.